Today I'm gonna to walk you through the money routine I created to master my personal finances. And this is something I do every single time I get paid. As a matter of fact, if you're watching this right now and you're not where you want to be financially, keep in mind that this routine actually starts before you ever get paid. So now I just want you to relax a little bit, sit back and just take everything in that I'm about to say because this right here is gonna help you out a lot. And if you stick around to the end, I have something very special for you at the end of this video and don't worry, it's completely free. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm Reggie Bryant. I'm the author of The Wealth Journey and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. So we're gonna jump straight into this. I'm not gonna waste any time today. Your time is extremely valuable. So we're gonna jump right into this. Ever since I got started on my financial journey and ever since I started making my first dollar on my full-time job, that was the moment this money routine started. Now it wasn't where it is today, but it's evolved over the years and I just wanna share it with you. So the first part of this routine is look at where you're at now and then just jump into the future just a little bit. I would say no more than five years. You just wanna jump into the future and look at your future self. And what this looks like is just writing down a few of your goals that you wanna have five years from now. So goals that I have for myself were things like, I definitely wanna have a certain amount of money in my bank account. So my five-year goal then was having something like $40,000 in my savings account. I wanted to be making at least six figures at my job. I wanted to definitely be debt-free. And lastly, I wanted to have multiple streams of income. Now at the time, I had no idea what that looked like. I just knew I wanted to have more than my job be the one thing that pays me. I wanted to have multiple things that paid me. And on top of that, I wanted that money to come in no matter what was happening, no matter if I was sleeping, eating, whatever. I wanted that income to be passive. And I didn't really have a particular number in mind. I just knew I wanted a few extra couple hundred dollars at least. But I wasn't even thinking crazy. I was just like, the future version of me is gonna be making at least six figures. He's gonna be debt free. He's gonna have at least 40K in his bank account saved. And that was just part one of looking into the future. I was just thinking of a blissful future. I was like, right now I'm making 60K. I wanna at least be making 100, 120K by the time five years have gone by. And it's a lot like planting a tree. You don't realize how powerful it is to have these thoughts and have these goals for yourself until they actually start happening in your life. And I'm not saying that writing them down is gonna make them happen. We're gonna put the work in and I'm gonna show you how to put the work in to make these things happen. But knowing what you want is gonna take you so much further because you'll see that as we go along this video, more things are gonna be added on to the future version of myself. And because we keep adding, we're constantly improving, we're constantly taking that next step to get to where we wanna be. So basically what I've just described is, you know, a person who's just starting out, thinking about five years into the future. Where do I wanna be? What does my lifestyle look like? How are my money habits? How does my savings account look like? I have zero debt, you know, how much money's coming in from the job? How much money's coming in from my side income streams? What even are those side income streams? That got me to start really thinking about my future. And all it was was just a few notes in my notes app on my phone, just, okay, this is what I wanna do. And it was very basic, very much like a bullet point list type of situation but it ended up getting very powerful because obviously if you ever wanna have 40K or five figures at all in your savings account, you gotta figure out what you're gonna to do to get there. And that was when step number two happened when I got snapped back into reality. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. How am I gonna get there? It just seemed like it was so far off. Like some, some parts of it really seemed like it was unattainable. Like for example, making six figures, that's something that everyone pretty much aspires to do, or at least that's what everyone says they wanna do. I wanna make six figures. That is like the most popular phrase that I've heard in the working industry period. And when you look at everyone that's there, it looks like it's just so far off. Like five years, am I sure I can do this? And if you mess around and start telling people what your financial goals are and what your you know success goals are in life, they might even start putting doubt in your mind like, what five years you'll be lucky if it's 10 years they'll say stuff like it takes most people their whole lives to get there what makes you think you can get there on five all i'm going to tell you is this don't ever underestimate yourself that's just something i really wanted to stress so don't be afraid to really just think outside the box when you're planning out your future but anyway what i was saying is you want to snap back into reality like okay I'm definitely not there. You have to be real with yourself and look in the mirror. The mirror can be your bank account. The mirror can be how you are right now, like how your bills are compared to how much you're spending and things of that nature, how much you're able to save a month right now and how much money you're making right now, things like that. That would be an example of looking in the mirror. And the biggest part of looking in the mirror is looking at how much you actually make per year, right? I'm talking looking at how much you make gross per year. 
and then understanding that this is not how much I actually make gross per year. Like for example, for me, back then I was making $60,000 per year and I had to come to the realization, no, I'm not actually making $60,000 a year because I get taxed. I'm pretty sure I brought home something like $43,200 my first year of working. And that's why we have to be real and look into that mirror because it's a facade when you're just looking at your gross income because if you base your expenses off your gross income, you're not gonna make a lot of great financial decisions and you might make more expensive decisions than you can actually afford. Like we're talking about a $16,800 difference between what my gross income was versus my take home income, which is the equivalent of $1,400 a month. So I want you to think about that when you're looking in the mirror and looking at where you're at right now. What you really wanna do is, even if you just got started or if you've been doing this for a long time, this still applies to you. You wanna look at how much you're making right now after taxes, and you wanna look at how much you're spending right now. And you wanna do what I call mastering your budget. And if you're not quite sure how to do that, I don't have near the amount of time to do that in this video. This will be like a 40 minute video. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell you about a video that I already made. It's called How to Master Your Budget. And I'll link it up here. That video is pure gold. Watch it, rewatch it, take notes, do what you have to do. But I'm telling you right now, that video right there is free game that will put several thousands of dollars into your pockets. And I'll just give you a quick synopsis of what that means to master your budget. It means that every single month, you're gonna know off the top of your head, okay, it's the first through the 15th. This is how much I'm gonna to expect to come out of my bank account. Okay, it's the 16th through the 30th. This is how much I expect that's gonna be coming in and this is how much I expect to be coming out, like down to the cent. And that video shows you exactly how you're gonna be able to do that, how you can anticipate certain expenses. And sometimes you might be off, that's okay. It's gonna take about three months for you to really get it dialed in. But I'm telling you right now, once you master your budget, your whole financial life is gonna be so much easier. And the only time you really need to revisit that budget is when you're making financial changes or you're making certain upgrades to your lifestyle. And the powerful thing about this budget is it's going to have a savings portion within your budget. So you're going to have a certain amount of money that you already know is going to go to your savings account every single month. And if you have the room for it and the finances to support this, you can also fit in things like investments and things of that nature that can help your money grow. More on that later, though. And then you know what you do once you have everything set up. The same way you automate your bills, the same way you automate your rent, your utilities, your cell phone bill. And by the way, if you're not doing that, you might wanna go ahead and do that because it, it'll take a lot of mental capacity out of it. One thing I always stand by is money shouldn't be a super mental thing. It shouldn't be something you have to think about all the time. Okay, I gotta pay this bill. Oh my gosh, I gotta, gotta pay rent. I gotta pay for Amazon Prime. I gotta pay for Netflix. You don't wanna be thinking about that stuff. Make it automatic, make it as easy as possible. That's gonna make it even easier to anticipate your expenses. I will caution you though, you don't want to automate every bill until you feel 100% comfortable. I definitely, when I got started out, I didn't automate every single bill right away because I wasn't sure if I had the financial backing to do so. And once I got comfortable about a month or two later, that was when I automated everything. But I say all of that to tell you this, since you probably already have most of your bills automated, you want to do the same thing with your savings. If you want to save 400 a month, automate it and make it happen as early on in the month as possible that's going to be the one thing that ensures you save your $400. Because what I used to do, I used to do it backwards. I used to be like, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and pay my bills first. I'm going to pay everything else first. I'm going to buy my wants first. And then at the end of the month, all right, then I'm going to put away my money. And that right there deteriorated how much I could actually get away with saving. Because you might come up with a number like four or 500 at first, maybe even 200 or something like that, right? But then you might realize, man, I did this so early on in the month. I can actually do more than that. Next month, I'm gonna do 300 or maybe 400. We'll see what I can get away with. And you can inch it up just a little bit to see how much you can actually save. And I promise you, you will blow your own mind. And that's what happened to me. But the thing is, I didn't start automating my savings and things of that nature until years down the road. So that's what I meant when I said this stuff is evolving. And if you feel like this is a lot of stuff in this video because we still have a little ways to go, don't worry, I actually have a free download in the description that's gonna show you exactly 
everything that I'm talking about in this video is gonna break everything down step by step to make it as easy as possible for you. Just head over to the link in my description. I will have it outlined and you will be on your way. And while you're doing all of this, this is all about habits and routines. Remember, everything in life is about habits and routines, doing things consistently. You don't have to study all day and look at videos on YouTube and read a bunch of articles to get good at this stuff. You just have to do it a lot. And something that I want to really stress in this video, while you're doing all these things, this is part of the routine too, while you're doing all of these things, something you you really want to do is make sure you're keeping your expenses the same. You want to keep your expenses as low as possible. So if you're living in a modest apartment right now that's still pretty nice but you know you could do better, there's nothing wrong with staying there for a few more years as you stack up and get to where you want to be. If you're driving a decent car right now but you know you could do better, you know what I mean? You can keep driving that car, especially if it's already paid for. There's no need to upgrade right now. What you want to focus on while you're getting yourself where you want to get to and mastering your personal finances it's very hard to master something under stress. It's very hard to master your finances when you keep increasing your expenses and then your income, as you're going to find out, is going to definitely either flatline, cap out, or something. But your expenses are the one variable that can always keep going up. And that's not what you want. Not when you're getting your finances under control and not when you're mastering everything from the expenses that are leaving your bank account to the money that's going into your bank account down to the cent, how much you can expect your bonuses to be, stuff like that. You want to be able to anticipate this to a point where you can look into a few months from now and you know exactly how much money you could expect to have in your bank account just based on how you've mastered your budget and how you've automated your savings. I know that was a lot. Let me calm down. So the reason that you want to keep your expenses as low as possible and keep them as flat line as possible. Now, things are going to go up like gas, groceries, rent, right? That's stuff we can't control. But we don't want to make new bills for ourselves that are way more than way outside of our scope. And that's exactly why we need to look into how much we make per year and per month after taxes. That right there is going to give you an idea and a knowledge base around how much you can afford to spend every month while still meeting your other financial goals. And as you keep your expenses the same and as your income hopefully increases and hopefully one of your goals is to increase your income throughout the years, that's what I recommend for anyone to have as a goal. As that income increases and as your expenses stay the same, you can then invest more and save more. And all you want to do is keep increasing your income, keeping your expenses the same while you're saving the difference and investing the difference. And that is how we build wealth. That is how we start getting a lot of money just stacking up either in our savings account or in our investments. That's how you, that's where the real money is. And you do these things over the long term. You don't just invest just to take it out tomorrow because you made a quick buck. Like, no, 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 no. Over like a 20 year period, that's where the real money is. And the same thing goes for saving. You're not just going to save for a couple months and then, okay, I'm done. No, 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 no. Build a nice foundation so no matter what emergency happens, no matter what happens at work, no matter who makes you mad, you'll have a certain amount of peace just knowing, hey, I'm good. No matter what happens, I got, I got me a savings. I'm good. I got me an emergency fund. I have my money working for me. I have investments. And I'll have to make an in-depth tutorial around investing. That's something that's going to take quite a bit of time. But for you guys, I will 100% do it. I just really want you to pay very close attention to that video because it can really help you out a lot. And I even have products coming out for you very soon that's going to help you out on investing and just managing your money in general. So if you're interested in that, hit the other link down below. You can book a 30-minute session with me and talk about what you would want to see in that kind of a product. I do plan on releasing that early on. 2023. And my plan is to have the product completely finished by the end of 2022. And for a few of you, some of you can take it early on and be, you know, the testers of it. You'll have lifetime access even throughout the improvements and everything. You'll have lifetime access. But yeah, definitely hit me up that link in the description. And if, if that's something you're interested in, hit me up. We can talk about it. We can exchange contact information and go from there. Lastly, you want to constantly feed yourself knowledge around personal finance and constantly improve yourself. And as you do this, the best way, in my opinion, to do this is to read books. Um, you can listen to other people too, like podcasts or like, you know, YouTube channels, like my YouTube channel and things like that. And other YouTube channels that we have out there, you can hear different perspectives and different schools of thought. And you're going to find something that resonates with you and something that fits your life. And you might relate more to things that I go through or things that I've went through in my life. They'll say, you know what? 
that's that's re what relates more to me and that's the thought process that I think when I think about money I'm going to go with this guy or you might not resonate with that you might go with someone else that's fine but you want to find an overall perspective like for example Dave Ramsey has a perspective Graham Stephan has a perspective but which one resonates which one makes the most sense to your personal life because for me Dave Ramsey has the advice of you know save your first thousand dollars then pay off all your debt to me like I respect him and his platform and everything he's done. I think he has something great going on, but I don't agree with that specific advice, saving a thousand and then paying off all your debt. I think it should be reversed. I think you should save as much as possible while paying off little by little of your debt. Then as you get your establishment financially, then you can go ahead and start paying off your debt heavily. Because if COVID 2.0 happens, and then all you have is a thousand dollars in your savings, but most of your debts paid off, you're gonna be looking sick. So that's just my perspective. Anyway, there's a ton of financial books out there, but I do also have a personal finance book that I wrote early on this year, and I released it back in August. It's called The Wealth Journey, as I alluded to in the beginning of the video. And if you're interested in that, check out the link in the description, hit up Amazon. It's a pretty quick read, it's a good read, it's motivating. It's insightful and it can help you get exactly where you need to go. And you can learn from a perspective of someone who started from like literally just nothing, starting from not knowing much of anything, starting from just going through it at work, not knowing what to do to becoming someone who improved and learned. And every single lesson that I learned is stuff that I've packed into that book. Very special to me. It was a very important project and it is something I'm extremely proud of. So if that's something that you're interested in, definitely check it out in the description. And it would mean a lot to me because it would really support me and help me out a lot. I would definitely appreciate that. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. That is the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. So you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Check me out on Patreon. I will see you in the next video.